Okay, so some crazy stuff happening in the past couple days in regards to abortion. Now, uh, there was a draft opinion written by Justice Alito where he was basically arguing and writing the opinion against a case which will end up resulting in the overturn of Roe v. Wade. And this is shocking for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off, this draft was leaked by somebody uh, to uh, no one's knowledge at this point. We don't know who leaked it. But um, the, uh, this is unprecedented for that simple fact because a draft memo or a draft of a justice's uh, uh, opinion on a certain case doesn't get leaked like this. Um, and it stands to reason that the, whoever was the whistleblower had to have some sort of connection to the legal system. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I feel like this was leaked uh, on purpose. Or, of course, it was leaked on purpose, but it was leaked at this time specifically to feign uh, uh, public outrage against this ruling, or this potential ruling. Um, now, with that being said, uh, we're going to look at this article that I have uh, pulled up here, and we'll lead, read a little bit from Politico, who is the uh, news source that broke the news. Uh, so, the Supreme Court has voted to overturn abortion rights, a draft opinion showed, and uh, this basically goes into what I've described here. The draft opinion is a full-throated, unflinching rep uh, repudiation of the 1973 decision which guaranteed federal constitutional protections of abortion rights and a subsequent 1992 decision, Planned Parenthood v. Casey, that largely maintained the right. Uh, and per Alito, uh, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. We hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled, he writes in the document, labeled as the opinion of the court. It is time to heed the Constitution return to the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. So, um, there is a lot of things. Now, this, this logic here uh, stems from a, a frame of analysis with respect to interpreting the Constitution, known as originalism, or a constitutional originalist, who basically says that whatever the Constitution originally said is what we need to abide by, and that's what the Founding Fathers meant, and no sort of revisions are deemed necessary. Um, and unfortunately, this leads to some precarious policies, if you want to put it that way, um, and precarious... Uh, um, uh, societal things such as abortion or, or gay marriage or something of that like. Um, in this instance, uh, uh, there is, in this, uh, in this draft, it's basically established that, um, that the Constitution does not make any sort of direct reference to abortion, therefore any ruling thereof is deemed, uh, um, uh, or is should be rather allocated towards the states, um, and the Constitution doesn't have necessarily a legal basis in terms of protecting abortion rights. Um, now, originally in Roe v. Wade, the uh, protections was for uh, the government can't uh, ban women from getting abortions uh, before the end of the first trimester, and. This was cited, uh, I believe, in the, um, I think it was the 14th Amendment. It was, uh, I, wanna, I wouldn't want to go back and double check that, but um, it was basically cited uh, within the Constitution. And if you read it in a specific way, that is definitely, I guess, a logical extrapolation from that uh, interpretation of, of the, the amendment. However, um, a better way to protect the rights of women in terms of abortion would be to codify it into law. And um, 
the public opinion about Roe v. Wade, and I'll get to that former point in a minute, but to get to this here, just to kind of illustrate the broad popularity for abortion rights, half of voters support maintaining Roe v. Wade, which basically translated just means we uh, that most people agreed that abortion should be allowed at the very least in some instances. Um, if we look at this article, just to get dig into the details here, half of voters, 50%, say Roe v. Wade should not be overturned. More than 28% who say it should be overturned. Um, more than 2 in 10 voters, 22%, are undecided according to the poll. Majority of Democrats, unsurprisingly, and uh, independents say Roe v. Wade should not be overturned, while a narrow majority of Republicans say it should. The poll was conducted on Tuesday, the day after the political uh, published the uh, this article, uh, up, uh, this article right here. So I'm sure that in some respects that influenced public opinion, maybe. Um, but nonetheless, I feel like the trend is relatively indicative of the sentiment expressed here. Now, um, interestingly enough, and I just saw this today, the Senate is now uh, going to hold a vote next week on a bill that will codify Roe uh, into law. And it's going to require 60 votes. Now, in terms of the viability of that passing, it's very low. However, um, I think that this sort of attempt to codify into law should shut up some of the uh, uh, Bernie or busters out there that Democrats aren't trying anything to codify or do anything to uh, push forth legislation that guarantees abortion rights for women. Um, this is a this obviously needs to be this is obviously like required at this point because doing this because we know it's going to fail. It's going to result in revealing the people, whether it be Democrats or Republicans, which it will be virtually all Republicans. It's going to reveal that they don't give a fuck about women and women's rights. They only care about controlling their bodies. And of course, there is religious aspects to this uh, because religiosity is, is uh, tied to um, abortion. Uh, and, you know, religious people are strongly against it, and, um, so conservatives are playing to that base as well. Um, they're also playing to their principles of trying to make life a living hell for everyone, especially minorities and women. Um, that is something that they're also attempting to do, uh, and something they truly believe in. But, um, and I, I know that we all know that, um, Republicans don't actually give a shit about women, or, or fetuses, or babies for that matter. Um, uh, because if they had cared about like the welfare of women and and children, then they would not be attempting to cut uh, like welfare programs, uh, like food stamps, uh, and and all these things that would otherwise benefit women and children. And, you know, I mean, they're also trying to not, uh, they're virtually against uh, sex education, they're against um, funding for Planned Parenthood and contraception and things of that nature. So really, they just don't actually care about women or children. They care more about controlling women and having uh, children uh, have to grow up in a environment where they don't receive assistance from the government. Uh, from the government, excuse me. Um, and the and the logic that they employ in, the, in that respect is basically like, well, we don't have the money. We need to f uh, fund the military and fund it to these other ancillary uh, elements of of the uh, of the economy. So it's. Um, I feel like this having this vote will be a good PR thing in terms of the Democrats. Um, we'll see how much influence this has with the midterms. I haven't really thought about that specifically yet, but it will be interesting to see that development. Um, I think there might be a slight bump, but uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it won't have any effect. I, I feel like it will have some effect, but um, you know, we'll, we'll see how much 
because there will be some inertia as time progresses until the until the election. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, abortion, and I haven't really discussed this generally on my channel, but um, I am pro-choice. I believe in, in increasing funding for sex education, uh, uh, you know, increasing funding for Planned Parenthood and for um, doing all those good stuff, right? I feel like codifying it into law makes more sense than approaching it through the judicial branch. Um, however, the uh, viability of pushing that through Congress and the Senate it's just really difficult. Um, you need, you need like, like that post mentioned, you need 60 votes to pass it through the Senate, and it's a, uh, it is a tall order to ask for. Even if Democrats win this next election, like somehow, you know, they win more seats in the Senate. Uh, I, I just, I don't know, man, because there's a lot of, Dem or there's a lot of Democrats in Congress who are, are, uh, you know, those blue dog Democrats who, Basically, vote for Republicans a lot of the time. You know, Henry Cuellar is is a prime example of that. Joe Manchin is as well. So, I feel like the dynamic here with respect to the midterms is going to be definitely interesting to uh, to witness in the upcoming months. Um, having this vote is obviously is obviously a necessity if you're a Democrat. Um, because if it fails, which it probably will, you can, uh, you can use that PR to, uh, increase your chances of gaining more seats in Congress for the midterms. But, you know, we'll see if they actually do it because Democrats are fucking idiots and they're completely inept when it comes to electoralism. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there, but yeah, anyway, um, this is obviously insane to go backwards in time to like the 1950s and make it where a woman can't get an abortion. It's it's fucking insane. And you know, a lot of people uh, need to realize that they're not going to stop with just abortion. They're going to keep going until they are able to ban gay marriage, reverse that because I mean why wouldn't they? It hasn't been that long that gay marriage has been allowed in the United States. Uh, they'll probably, you know, try to bring uh, back uh, more uh, conversion therapy for, for gay people. Um, although that still exists and it's not necessarily outlawed, they're going to try to make it more ubiquitous. They're going to basically do everything they can to reverse our society and make it worse. That's basically what Republicans do. They like making the world a worse place to live in, by almost every metric, by the way. And it's not just for minorities. Um, obviously, that's the more um, uh, victimized group. But, I mean, even with like climate change and stuff, they, we, they just basically want to make the world a living hell for every single one of you watching this right now. So, anyway... We gotta hope to God that maybe by a miracle this passes in the Senate, which honestly it probably won't. But um, again, at the very least, the PR from that could maybe establish some momentum for Democrats going into the midterms. I don't know, but um, you know this this is obviously not good. Going backwards uh, uh, socially like this is is, is wild to me. Yeah, uh, again. I, uh, I cross my fingers that that passes sometime next week. If we're able to codify that into law, then that's great. But if not, which is likely the case, hopefully Democrats are in, at the very least competent enough to use that from the PR's perspective. But yeah, uh, right now it's not good, uh, but going to hope for the best.